This is just a quick follow-up video to some videos that I posted a short time ago on a, a Chinese reflow oven. I've seen a lot of uh, comments on the various forums regarding uh, problems people were having with it. And um, there's obviously a lot of good advice on the forums. A lot of the advice related to issues where the solder paste wasn't flowing properly on various components or on certain parts of the board and as I said there's a lot of uh, good advice but one thing that was a, a general response to that was that the temperature was possibly too low. Now these two boards have been both put through the same process same pick and place, uh, same components the only difference is the reflow profile that I used uh, the top one, the back one, is the profile I would normally use and this board works fine. The front board uh, does not work at all, it's a different profile. And the temperature on the non-working board was 20 degrees centigrade higher than on the working board. And the reason it doesn't work is not because of component damage, it's because the solder paste hasn't flowed. So even though the temperature was 20 degrees centigrade higher, the solder paste didn't flow on this one, but it was fine on this one. And the reason for that is because the profile that I used was incorrect. Not only was the peak temperature higher than it needed to be, which in itself is not necessarily a problem, as long as you don't damage components or the board, but the solder paste itself uh, must be used in a certain way. If I just do a quick sketch of some profiles I'll explain what the issue is with these two boards. So what we're generally aiming for when we create a reflow profile is a, a multi-stage temperature profile within the machine and the idea is to get the board, the entire board, at up to temperature so that the solder paste will reflow properly uh, but not so high that the components will be damaged and typically a profile will have several stages the first is a gentle climbing temperature the second is uh, a kind of equalization stage and quite often you'll have the temperature rising very slightly through that stage and then you'll have a sharp rise to final temperature and then a drop off back down to uh, ambient. Various stages perform various tasks. This first stage um, is to pre-warm the board but also to activate the flux within the solder paste. The second stage is to get the entire board at the temperature that the whole thing equalise. Uh, at this point this isn't hot enough to reflow the solder and should be well below the uh, point where any component damage can occur. Typically you may need to go above the temperature that will damage components if maintained. So this is kind of the danger area for the components. Uh, most components will allow this for a, a short duration, it's usually 10 seconds or something like that. Um, and then you need to quickly drop back down below that uh, profile. And the idea is that the temperature will go above the reflow temperature of the solder paste, which might be something sort of around here. The solder paste will reflow, solder the components to the board, and then end of the cycle it will run back down and cool down. You don't want the cool down to be too rapid because that can cause problems with the, uh, the joints uh, or the board warping. The difference in the two profiles that I used for the two boards I've just shown you, uh, this is the first board and you can see that it hasn't reflowed properly at all. The peak temperature was um, 237 degrees centigrade. Uh, but it hasn't reflowed very well, the joints are very uh, messy, a lot of joints haven't soldered at all and the board doesn't work. It's got a lot of um, dry joints, bad joints and under a microscope as you can see it just doesn't look good. The second board 
used a similar profile. The main difference was that it looked more like uh, this, so it had the same initial step, but a much shorter uh, equalization phase, a lower peak temperature, and then the usual decline. And the difference was actually 60 seconds, so this section was one minute shorter. The temperature was 20 degrees lower, uh, and yet we got a very good flow, uh, as you can see in the image. These are probably the worst joints on the board. I couldn't find any that look worse than this, but even so you can still see they're significantly better than in the first image. Now the reason for this is this phase was too long or the temperature was too high. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the, the flux within the solder paste will burn off through the process. If you maintain the temperature too high for too long in this phase of the profile, what will happen is all the flux will basically evaporate by the time you get to this point. And then when you try to reflow the solder, there just isn't any flux in it and it just will not um, flow around the component lead or the board. So you need to make sure that when you are creating the profile that you take the flux you're using into account. Um, the amount of solder paste on the board and how quickly the board temperature will rise. The whole point of this phase is to get the board and the components and everything else up to temperature. And if you've got it all up to temperature to the point where flux is starting to sort of boil off, then there's no point having this extend for any longer because it's done its job. So you might as well then go straight on to the, um, the, the flow part of the, uh, the profile. So it's worth taking that uh, into consideration. It's not necessarily a case of just making it hotter if the solder paste isn't flowing. It's um, have a close look at the joints. If they do look very dry and it's consistent across the entire board, it's more likely that you're drying out the flux in the solder paste rather than the, um, the temperature is just not getting high enough. So as I say, bear that in mind when you're experimenting best thing to do is get a, a, an old board that you haven't put components on, put some solder paste around it and then see how the uh, profile works. This is the sort of experimentation that I will do before I'll flow a board. Um, so this is just an old um, prototype board. So we have three runs on this single board. Uh, I won't put it under the microscope, I think oh, hopefully you can see it well enough here. So we have the first run on the left is the same profile that didn't work on the two boards I've just shown you. Um, it's hot but the equalization phase was too long and it dried all the flux out and you can kind of see that hopefully on the camera. It's a very poor joint. Um, the next one was the correct profile. You can see that's flowed quite well. And the third one was um, an intermediate where it went higher, the equalization was a bit longer and you can see that started to degrade as well, it's a bit of a, a dull finish so it's not absolutely critical but it's, um, you know, it's fairly close, you need to keep the process fairly well under control. If you're doing this sort of testing do it in all the corners of the board so this is the exact same three runs and you can see we've got exactly the same results. The first one it was a hot uh, run, but the equalization was too long, dried the flux out, and then it didn't flow. And then the middle one, which is the correct profile, looks uh, absolutely perfect, it's flowed correctly. And then back to the third one, hasn't flowed as well, because we're not at the optimal um, profile. And then you do that for all corners in the center of the board, and when you're happy that it's flowing correctly, you've got the right profile, you can then commit yourself to uh, placing some components and seeing if that works uh, as well. Uh, maybe doing some tweaks to the profile based on what you find, but uh, the, doing this gives you a good starting point for the profile. So hopefully it will save you a lot of time. But as I say, don't assume that because it's not flowing that you need to add more heat. Uh, it may just be that the profile initial parts are, are not correct for the solder paste you're using.